Oh, you bleeding? Oh, oh yeah, you bleeding. Yeah. Medic! Shh, shh. We're gonna put a tourniquet on this. You're Stop gonna be squirm. okay. Stop whoa, squirming, hey, you. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not around the neck. Oh, no, 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 no. Shh. It's okay. We got this. Oh. Stop squirming. Who's Brava? Who's Brava? Shh. <laughs> You're squirting. It's okay. Yeah. Hey, it's Mike with Teacher's Defense. Welcome back to the Modern Sportsman in Burnsville, Minnesota. We have a special treat as we're going to start a new series on medical gear. Tonight we are going to look at tourniquets. And we have all kinds of different tourniquets that we're going to look at this evening. And really what we want to cover is not only how to apply and use a tourniquet, what situations you would actually use and need them for, but also options uh, uh, as far as purchasing and acquiring tourniquets, what products are out there. And we're also going to cover some uh, things to look out for because there are counterfeit tourniquets for a few of the models that exist on the market today. Well, one of the first models we're going to look at is the RATS, the Raplet Application Tourniquet System by Jeff Kirkham, a former Special Forces uh, soldier and 28-year vet. And actually, John Lovell from the Warrior po Poet Society actually did quite a decent interview with him talking about the development of this tourniquet, and we will post that in the description below. We also have the SOF, this large band system here, which is really good for buddy care, but actually has some other issues if you're looking at purchasing this one. So we will cover that as well. We also have the CAT, the Combat application tourniquet, which is a common one issued to U.S. forces. And last, the SWAT system, which is probably the best on the market as far as application for children and self-aid. Let's actually try these in action right now. So tonight I have this wonderful medical dummy right here <laughs> that's going to be, that's going to help us to actually test these tourniquets tonight. But we also have a special guest this evening. Uh, introducing for the first time on Aegis Defense Solutions, I want to introduce you all to Hunter, a Army combat medic who was recently just separated all right, so I was in the Army for seven years. Uh, I've been out for two years now. My name's Hunter. Uh, I'm here to help out Mike, and we're going to talk about medical. So in my seven years, I actually did not uh, get deployed, so I'm not a combat veteran, so my experience is a little bit limited, but I will do my best with the knowledge that I learned. So. And, and that's for you guys. Hey, well, you're gonna have a heck of a lot more knowledge than I am in on this. You know, I've, I've, I've done the training, I've done the CLS training before my deployments and everything. But even then, where you still have, you know, uh, the, the combat medics that are training us and all that stuff. You know, you guys have still uh, quite a bit more knowledge than, than myself on that. So, all right, let's dive into this. Ready? No! <laughs> I will punch you, you in the nose. <laughs> okay, so why don't tonight, let's start first and talk about the, the cat. Uh, don't touch and the cats tourniquets. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the cats first, first, just because that's probably the one I'm the most intimate with. Uh, that's what we were issued, certainly. And why don't you tell us a little bit about this one? What would be the advantages of using this in an emergency situation versus some of the other ones? Yeah, so uh, as you can tell, this is a Cat Gen 7. This is the newest state of the art tourniquet. This is the best one. So, advantages for this tourniquet. It's extremely easy to put on yourself. If you fold it properly and have it prepared for yourself, you can put it on your arm here, arm here, slide it on. You can slide it on your casualty, no problem, high and tight. Nice pull handle, crank it. He can handle it, don't worry about it. Shh. Looking for bleeding. Is it stopping? Is the bleeding stopping? Oh yeah. Is it, is it stopping? <laughs> tapping out, brother. Oh, he's tapping out. <laughs> that one hurts. And then I would take the, the uh, shoe off here and I would check for a pedal pulse on the top here of the, of the leg. Um, would we want to check for a penile pulse? Definitely not. Okay. Because you do not want to put a turn <laughs> that, that part. <laughs> All right, so here I have the Cat Gen 7 again, and I want to teach you guys how to stage the tourniquet. Now, I learned this trick about a year ago, a year or two ago, from Bear Independent on YouTube, and we'll put his, uh, we'll put that video in the description. But shout out to Bear Independent. Anyways, so you're gonna take the tourniquet and you're gonna wrap it around like this, the length of the tourniquet, the tail here, and then you're gonna wrap it back over itself and then wrap it back one more time. And then you're gonna take the end, put it through. And then we wanna make a pull handle, pull tab, whatever you wanna call it, like this. 
and then we wrap the rest over like that. Then for the windlass, the windlass is gonna be in the clip here. And then the windlass holder, we want it not over the top because that's another thing we have to defeat when we're applying it. We wanna put it at a 45 degree angle, overhanging just a little bit so we can grab it with gloved fingers or under stress, easier to grab. Um, here's the pull handle again and that's how it's gonna lay in your pocket or kit. Or... All right, so here's the tourniquet. It's staged properly, how I showed you guys. So you're gonna flick it out, throw it on yourself, and now you have the pull tab, and you can pull that. Yeah, that was damn quick, yep. Super quick, and then go with the windlass. Ready? This is a Gen 6 cat tourniquet. This is the Gen 7. You can tell the difference by the um, this Velcro holder it's white on the gen 6 and uh, gray on the gen 7 doesn't really matter but that's just one way you can tell now there's a difference so with the with the gen 6 cat tourniquet you're gonna have two you see this you're gonna have two uh, loops that you have to go through with the gen 7 they updated it to make it very easy and you only have one loop to go through so with the, the official way to put a CAT Gen 6, you know, with the white, the white part, real tourniquet here. Um, for the arm, you can go once through. So when you're applying it to the arm, you can go through once, um, once through the strap, and you can tighten it down. Now for an arm, or sorry, for a leg, you're gonna wanna go twice because you're gonna need that power. So you're gonna go, <clears throat> you're gonna go once through that loop and then you're gonna have to go through the second loop and then tighten it down like you mean it. And part of the process is looking like you got a heavy load in your pants, but that's part of it, right? Absolutely, okay. and make sure you don't pinch anything off here as well. Now you're, you were talking that. to us earlier about the windlass, about watching that and the pain on the, the actual, uh, uh, the, the casualty, right? Yeah. What do we need to look for for that? So as you're tightening the windlass, it's going to be about two, three times around. As you do that, you're going to watch the face of the casualty and you're going to see if they, you know, uh, grimace in pain. Um, and then you're also going to check to make sure bleeding is controlled. Then no, you secure. Well, we oh, want to back that mind. off. If if, the, if he's grimacing too much, he's in a lot of pain and discomfort. We want to back it off a little bit. Absolutely not. No, um, we want it tighter, and mm -hmm. to the point where the leg just falls off. You want it so tight that the bleeding Absolutely. is is stopped, and you don't have any any distal pulse. No. Nope. Past the okay. Yeah. Now, one thing that you mentioned earlier too, when we talked about applying a tourniquet, is tourniquet pain. Yes. You got about what a five to ten minute window before now. Yeah, he's got. Let's say he's got a shattered leg, mm -hmm. or he's got a femoral bleed, something like that. Whatever the the situation is. Yep. So we apply that tourniquet five to ten minutes. What's going to happen to him? All right. So uh, injury just happened. Maybe he's in pain. Maybe he's not. Right. Because mm -hmm. people go into shock. Anyway, so we're going to put the tourniquet on high and tight above the injury, and yeah. Like what you're saying, Mike, about five, 10 minutes, having the tourniquet on full strength, you're gonna, or the casualty is gonna begin to experience what's known as tourniquet pain. It's extremely uncomfortable for the casualty and it's gonna suck, but that's that's just how yeah, it is to that, say yeah, someone. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. So it's pretty uncomfortable for me right now, but I wouldn't say I have tourniquet pain yet. Gotcha, that takes gotcha. a little while to kick in. All right, let's yeah. take a look at a couple of the other ones next. All right, so the next tourniquet we're actually going to look at tonight is the soft, the soft T. Is that what it is? Soft, soft T. Tea. So yeah, this is the soft T or the S O F tourniquet, and um, this one's pretty interesting. This is also approved for T triple C, which stands for uh, Tactical Combat Casualty Care. It's approved by the committee, which they test a lot of medical equipment out, and we want to go by their guide guidelines pretty much whenever we can because. Uh, their stuff is proven. Um, they've gone through the testing and we wanna uh, trust what they have done. So anyways, this is the soft tea. 
Um, it's very interesting. It has rubber on the back here to grip to the surface of the casualty. Um, it has a clip here that you can, if you cannot slip it over the leg, let's say, then you would unclip it here, just like that. And so we can come from underneath, yeah. Go from underneath, clip it back in, and here we go. So same thing. And I like that feature. Yeah, the teeth just kind of hook right into it. So as you tighten it, you don't need to do anything else. You're not playing around with Velcro. Yeah, yeah so this is a tourniquet where the technology, they didn't even use Velcro. Very interesting. Um, here we go with the windlass again. As we're as we're spinning it, we're gonna check out the casualty's face. Check our casualty, see, how's he doing? See if he what? is in pain. There it is. <laughs> there it is. What a sport. So I like to say uh, one turn past bad words. That's a good way to do it. And, <laughs> and you know I never forget that, yep. I'm having a I'm having a problem with this tourniquet actually. Look What's happening out? Well, my legs are. There we go. So this one requires more training than the cat tourniquets. Um, they're about the same price, but I, you know, there's pros and cons for everything, right? The cat tourniquets I do like more because they're easier, but this one still works. Now, and one thing that we uh, that you were saying earlier too was that the uh, particularly with the. Uh, the Slide soft tee down. was that this is not a good one for self-care. Correct. So this one basically is going to have to use two hands to apply, um, while the cat tourniquet is very easy to apply one hand in. So the soft tee, I'll say it again, the soft tee is for buddy aid, and the cat tourniquets, Gen 6 or 7, are great for personal aid, but they're also great for buddy aid. So. Um, Best all-around tourniquet, I would say, is the Gen 7 cat tourniquet. Yeah, you know, that, and the cat tourniquets were what we had when, uh, uh, when my deployments when I was overseas. Can too, I also so. add something? Yeah, go ahead. I actually like the other tourniquet, the first one, much better because this one is pinching my actual skin. Like, it snagged my skin and is twisting it. So, it's, oh, wow. it's okay. a lot more uncomfortable than the other one. The other one sucks. All tourniquets suck. Mm -hmm. But this one sucks more because of that skin pinching. Yep. This one's brutal. Yeah. I'm All right. Well, our last dummy need a little bit of a break. So we have a new dummy now that we're going to be using now the rats tourniquet on. Now I mentioned this earlier. The rats tourniquet was developed by Jeff Kirkham. Have you actually used or seen any of these uh, uh, in use before? I have never seen them in use in the army. Um, and I've never seen a real one in person until today. So kind of a treat. So, and they're actually not that complicated to apply. So let's go ahead and apply it onto our dummy here. <laughs> All right, so let's do the same leg again. So this one, I realize it's pretty simple. Uh, you're gonna have it set up like this, wherever you have it in your pocket, and you just pull it through like that. And let's get it high and tight here. And then, uh, and then we kind of shove this in here, huh? That's what she said. See, maybe I need some. Exactly. Maybe I need some. Uh, training on this specifically but uh it's gonna look something like that yeah it, it, it's really not yeah. too complicated i'm not a big fan of this tourniquet they're cheap right yeah they're not too expensive and uh they're not very wide which means it's gonna apply all that pressure in a smaller area which can cause damage and you mentioned the width and actually that's a smart thing to talk about real quick when it comes to mm -hmm. these tourniquets and if you were to improvise a tourniquet in particularly a thin band or even a belt is not going to be a good idea I, what was the adage was that an inch and a half to two inches in, in width mm -hmm. is that correct for that's what you correct. want yeah because otherwise yeah. you're going to cut into the actual the, the, the meat of the, the person yeah, you want to be about one and a half inches wide, so that's what this is, the Cat Gen 7, or Gen, Gen 6. Um, but yeah, width is good because it uh, disperses the pressure so it doesn't dig in, which causes nerve damage, and it's just not a good thing. Fair enough. Yeah. That one was not very tight. No, that's fine. We don't oh, what? That was right? tight. Yeah. What did that feel like? Oh, it felt like my leg was getting cut off. <laughs> or I'll let you introduce that one. This one's that is cool. I haven't gotten to see one of those hands on. Ready? All right, so which one do we have here? All right, so this is a, it's called a SWAT T. Um, SWAT T tourniquet. And this is the package it comes in. 
or at least mine does. Anyway, so this is a uh, vulcanized rubber elastic band, as you can see right there. It's pretty, pretty wide. I think it's 48 inches, something like that. Anyway, so this one is good for, well, you can self-apply. It's good for that. Well, what's neat is the friction of the rubber is what's actually going to help hold this together. So it's basically the friction of rubber on rubber and then tucking it. Yep, so I must say this is a lot tougher than like one of the other tourniquets because there's a lot more work to go into it, a lot more finesse to get it perfectly. Um, and then, yeah, how am I going to secure this, right? You got you to gotta shove it under there. You gotta put it under itself, but that's pretty hard. So what I wanna show you guys is on this tourniquet, if you see, here, let's, let's hold this out flat. So stretch, wrap, tuck. All right, so see these are, see my thumb right here? Um, these are rectangles. You wanna stretch this out with so much force that it becomes squares. So see that change? Pull it, pull it, pull it and then uh, the rectangles become squares. And then that's when we're wrapping it around the limb itself. Correct. All right, so let's go around the casualties leg here. I'm trying to set it up so I can actually see the print. There we go. Uh, kind of. I don't know guys, <laughs> this one's, this one's tough to set up here. Right, let's see if I can do it. All right, something like that. Now, I don't think it's that tight. How's it feel? Uh, honestly, that feels more comfortable. I would, maybe it's because it's not super tight, mm. but I can definitely feel a lack of like, like my legs are getting a little cold, which I can tell it's working a little is bit. Is it uh, tingling, falling asleep? Not, not really quite yet, but this is definitely the most comfortable one. All I heard is that we need, we need it tighter. No, we get tighter, <laughs> tighter. I think it does need to be tighter actually. But as you can see, um, this is one of the first times I ever used this tourniquet. It's kind of difficult to use. Um, so it, it really goes to show you these other technologies are a lot better to have in your kit and uh, to, to be the ones that you're training on. I would do these over some of the others like this. Well, and that brings up a big thing. I mean, the biggest thing is training, training overall. So even, I mean, you could buy a medical kit, you could buy a tourniquet, you can get the best, spend all the, the dollars on them and just outfit your vehicle, your, your IFAC on your range belt, whatever. But I mean, if you're not actually, I mean, take a stop the bleed class to do something like that and actually go get just a little bit of extra training on that stuff. Just so you're actually prepped to use those tools in the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. absolutely, Mike, you're right. Three. So, you know, out of all these tourniquets thus far that we've kind of messed with, you know, we just have these four models between, you know, the SWAT, the rats, uh, the cat, and the, and what, what did I miss in there? And the, uh, the rats, the SWAT, the soft. The soft, the soft. there we go. Uh, which, which one do you think is the easiest? You could just hand to somebody and they probably have the easiest time. It's definitely going to be the Cat Gen 7, this one right here. Um, if you, if you have it staged properly, um, and you hand it to someone, they should be able to figure it out. I've handed handed uh, this tourniquet, this exact tourniquet, to multiple of my friends that have never used a tourniquet, and I'm like, put it on me without any training, and they figure it out pretty pretty quickly. What they don't know is how tight you have to put the tourniquet on, which is really tight, or it's not going to work. So that is uh, something you have to train uh, with people. Yeah, we don't want to forget that yet. You're tightening that thing till it's until the flow of blood is stopped out of that wound. Um, yep, and you're gonna make sure that they have no pulse as well. Bingo, bingo. Medic! So the interesting thing about this tourniquet is it can get very small. And what I mean by that is 
You can put it on a limb that is very tiny. Who has tiny limbs? You know, the most precious, the most precious people in society, children. That was so, my second guess was children. That was your guess. second guess. <laughs> Anyways, so this I think look, I have a few. Looks like it worked a little better, but um, children, not midgets. And then I would tape it up. But anyways, so yeah, you know that that is a really good feature. That if they, you know this is a good one actually to have for children because mm -hmm. what we can actually cut that down, and you you could yeah, actually be, for those small limbs we can cut this to a smaller size to fit on those children, and you could uh, hypothetically then actually have a couple tourniquets uh, for multiple injured children. Mm -hmm. So uh, just like what Mike said, you can take this this band here, cut it in half right here, and you can have two staged in your kit if you have children or if you know you're gonna be around children. Uh, basically, the reason why you use this for children is because their limbs are so small. The Cat Gen 7, it can only go down to roughly, um, I think the, the stats on it are five inches in circumference or roughly two inches in diameter for a limb. Um, so Which means, yeah, infinite, be, very yeah. small, and toddlers, they're out. That's out of the picture for the cat, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, there's other ways to stop bleeding on those, uh, on small children as well, uh, which could be elastic wraps. Um, as long as you, you wrap it around tight, that will work. So this is like a, a elastic wrap that's extremely, extremely stretchy and you can get really tight with it. Now, real quick, uh, we wanted to point out when it comes to the cat tourniquets, there are counterfeit ones on the market. And uh, Hunter, Hunter, how do we tell the difference on those? All right, so with the Cat Gen 7 specifically, if you can see here on the clip, it says cat and cat upside down. And that means it's real. While the fake, the counterfeit one from like Amazon or something, uh, it, it says nothing. Um, also on the windlass, on the rod here, it says cat. I don't know if you can see that right here. Do you see that? Does it show up? It says cat, and then on this one, uh, CE, whatever. It doesn't say cat. Flip it around, this is really easy to tell. On the back, the plastic here, you're gonna see some writing on the real one, while the fake one is completely smooth, no writing, nothing. It says cat here on the real one, and nothing on the counterfeit. And please do not buy fake tourniquets. Uh, the, the counterfeit ones, we can't trust them. They might work, they might not. But we know we know the real one is gonna work. Yeah, and that um, windlass is gonna fail on those, on those yeah, the, the counterfeit ones. Yes, uh, absolutely. You're gonna save money on the fake ones, but uh, for something like a tourniquet, you wanna make sure you have the real thing because this is, this is about life. So. Yeah, Cat 5 to save lives, counterfeit to end lives. Got it. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> All right, so our final thoughts on the tourniquets this evening. You know, first off, uh, you know, uh, I brought in the rats, so we'll talk about real quick about the rats. Uh, it's definitely an interesting design. Uh, Jeff Kirkham uh, definitely has, I mean, he's got a lot of experience in that field, 28 years as, a, as an operator, certainly. And uh, like I said, I'll have that video of him down below in the description. And, but one thing that I think we learned on this, as far as self-application, it seemed like it was pretty easy for self-application, what did you guys think? Yeah, I would say one hand application, quite easy. Just train with it and you'll know what you're doing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, where were you guys' thoughts on that? What, you know, you had to wear most of them, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What um, was your What was your favorite? <laughs> uh, definitely not this one. Where's not that the, one. Where's the okay. cat one? Who's got the cat? He's got the cat. That one. That one's my favorite above all. The cat Gen 7? Yeah. Okay. It was, the, would you say it's the Cadillac of tourniquets? It is the Cadillac. It was the most comfortable. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> No, yeah, it's the most comfortable of all of them, although I didn't mm -hmm. try out the rubber one, which I apparently is supposedly more comfortable. Yeah, the SWAT but, team. Yep. But the, that one's so much easier to actually put on yourself and someone else to put on you, it outweighs the comfort. I no, mean, yeah, the comfort's not even a, a no. fact. In all reality, you're bleeding out. No, comfort's not a yeah, factor no. in any of this. Exactly. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, this, the cat's the one I'm most uh, familiar with. This is what we trained with when I was enlisted. Um, Definitely, it's also like the most recognizable, and like you said earlier, you hand it to someone, not very difficult to figure out, not very complicated. That one seems a little bit more uh, complicated, uh, especially for, since you can't really put it on with one hand. Uh, in terms of comfort, um, 
I'm, I'm bleeding out. On the soft, I mean, on the soft tea though, I did like that you could unclip that though. That, that is, that is definitely it, yeah. nice. I will say that. Um, definitely in 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 dealing with a time crunch, being able to unclip it, throw it around, and clip it back on without really losing any functionality. That's really important. Yeah, th this one's the quickest at that. Uh, when you're fumbling around with you gotta this, un you gotta like this, un um, thread it and everything. Yeah, with the Velcro trying to put it through the yeah. um, little tiny slits there. Yeah, yeah that's gonna take a while. It's a lot harder, but you know, yeah. So but you do, there. yeah. Mm -hmm. But you do run into the issue with that. This is much harder for self care. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, basically, you need two hands for the uh, the soft tea. I would say two hands. Yep. One thing I do have to add though, uh, during I did EMT school. During EMT school, we all did uh, time training on the, uh, the cat, and if you train with it, you can actually slip it through the little, uh, the little slip, pull it tight, almost as, fat as, uh, excuse me, almost as fast as you can unclip it, it's as long as you practice it. Like, it's not that much time difference. And practice is the key yeah. thing. So, you know, and with any of these, whatever product you do any more research on and you look at it doing, always make sure to get extra training. And so with that, you know, that's what's going to make you a better informed citizen, better informed person that's going to help others in the field if you go get training. So it's not just about the, all that equipment. It's also about what you're doing with it and how you're preparing yourself. So with that, stay prepared, not scared. This is Mike and the rest of the guys, Jaden, James, and Hunter with Aegis Defense Solutions. God bless and good night, guys. All right, that awesome. easy. Cool. That was great. Do we want to do a thing on that?